Welcome to this virtual open day Fontes University of Applied Sciences, ICT and Engineering programs, Campus Eindhoven. We are here with four moderators to inform you today about all kind of aspects related to an open day. But first, let me introduce all moderators. On my left, Mrs. Elgin. Hello, everybody. My name is Elga van Heel and I work in the Marketing and Communication Department for International Recruitment. Then on my left, this is Livia, one of our students. Hi, I'm uh, Livia. I'm a fourth year student at uh, Fontis. I'm doing ICT and Software Engineering and I'm specializing in Applied Data Science. Okay, thank you very much. And on my right, this is Mara, also one of our students. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Mara Koman and I'm a fourth year ICT and software engineering student and I'm here to share my student experiences so far. Okay, great. Let's start. Uh, a short overview of today's program. As what I mentioned, uh, it's mainly about ICT and engineering programs here in Eindhoven. We will inform you about our campuses, uh, small content of the ICT and engineering programs, student accommodation, uh, our student association proxy, of which Livia is our chairman, and many more things. As a first impression, we will show you now a video about Fontis. Enjoy! I'm Livia, Safia, Peter Lucas, Cristina de Bors Cristescu. I'm originally from Nigeria. I'm from Vietnam. From Romania. I'm from Russia originally. Colombian, raised in Aruba. I'm from Reunion Island. It was a dream for me actually to become a circus artist. And the only way was to come in Europe to do it. So the Dutch people, um, they're quite friendly actually. And they're really nice because they all speak really good English you can really easily communicate with them, so it's quite nice. <laughs> there is just bikes everywhere, and from my place to the school, it's already 20 minutes by bike. I live in a small house with one, two, three students. Also, they study here in Fontis. One from Lithuania, from Romania, from England. They are very nice. There are a lot of university around here a lot of international courses, so there are more international students. That's why there are a lot of rooms available for students to rent. And the price is also good. At first, of course, when students come here to study, they have to get a proper English at first, because we have to pass the tests before we come here to study in English. Studying in English, I can say that it's not that difficult. Like, for the first, one or two months I got used in studying in English and then like from the third month I was finding myself already thinking in English so that was a bit surprising even for me. Most of Asian countries they have high contest culture which means not too direct but here Dutch people they are very direct so at first I also find it a little bit rude because it's too direct for me. No I don't think they are rude. Um, they just say uh, what's on their mind. They first talk, then, uh, then think about the consequences, but that's still something I appreciate more than a um, hidden answer. I study at the Fontes University in Campus Venlo, and I study International Business and Management Studies. It's much different from the studies in the Czech Republic in a way that everything is practically oriented and that what you learn, you can actually apply right away. Studying here in Netherlands is what I can say, it's like a really friendly environment. Romania, between the teacher and the student, there's like a level like this, but then here in Netherlands, with teachers and students, we're having like both fun and we're on the same level. I really love the Dutch way of, of teaching. I think we are very practical. Um, we uh, allow them to think themselves and it's not us being the leaders and, uh, and telling them and explaining them, but they can discover some things on their own. I really love this way of teaching. Uh, now I'm fourth year studying at Fontes ICT, software engineering. In the first year I was like missing home a lot and my friends, uh, but after that my social life moved here in the Netherlands, so I'm surrounded by friends. 
I've gotten to learn so much, I've gotten to grow as a person also a lot and become really matured because I'm staying away from home. So it's been a really nice experience for me. I think they should dare and take this step. Of course, it's not going to be easy, but we are here to help them and they should be very confident. The door is always open, actually. Exit out of your comfort zone and go abroad and study because they're going to be a really, really good experience. Again, you just take the decision if you're up for an adventure and if you're up to new experiences, then I think it's really worth it. It's really, you will not regret it, so yeah. Okay, I, enjoy, I hope you enjoyed the movie. Uh, now we have a look at study in the Netherlands. Uh, internationally, our country is called Holland, but in fact, that's only two of our provinces. The whole of the Netherlands is called the Netherlands, uh, located centrally in Europe, making it easy to travel to other countries. Uh, let me give you some interesting facts. And I'm first asking Mara, can you give us some interesting fact as a student when you came over to the Netherlands? Uh, I found fascinating the fact that you can cycle everywhere in the Netherlands and um, that's all, that also means that you can go by bike outside uh, various cities. And um, even though there is a, it's a small country, it has around 17 uh, million people, but the, uh, the advantage is that you can uh, speak English easily and you don't have to know Dutch beforehand. Okay, great. And Livia, do you also have some facts about the Netherlands? I agree first with Mara because I think it's a lifestyle already for me, biking every day. And about the languages, I was really surprised to see that um, well, people speak both Dutch and English, so I don't have to actually know Dutch. So actually, uh, worldwide, we're second best in English proficiency as a non-native English-speaking country. And I think on top of that, the Dutch on average speak over three languages, which is really nice. Okay, so you were telling me, was the first time biking when you came to the Netherlands? No, but it was really nice to see that, yeah, you can go everywhere and I was tracking my time to go to the university uh, by bus, but now it was by bike, like every time, all the times that I had in mind was, yeah, I have 15 minutes by bike. Okay, <laughs> great. And you're coming from Romania, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. All right. Mrs. Elga? Well, uh, we have about uh, more than 100 different nationalities studying at one or more of our campuses. Uh, in the country, you will find more than 200 nationalities. And uh, on top of everything, uh, in the whole country, we have more than 90,000 international students. So don't be afraid if you don't speak Dutch, because everyone will speak either English, German or French. As an international student, you are finding now what's the best study option for you when studying abroad. Now, let me give you, or let we will give you, uh, a kind of reasons why we think that studying at Fontys here in Eindhoven is a very good option for you. So, Mara, could you give us some good reasons as a student why should you study here at Fontys? Uh, first of all, I would say that Fontys offers 28 bachelor programs taught in English and also five master programs, so that's already a plus. And it's an advantage because the people here speak English, like 95% of Dutch people are able to speak English, so communication also outside school is pretty easy. Um, and I would also say that another reason is the fact that people, that school in general is um, student-centered and um, during classes there is a lot of proactivity, proactivity because um, teachers are always willing to help students and there is a lot of interaction going on in classes. So you cannot really say that you are born during classes, there is always something that keeps, you, uh, keeps your interest up. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah. And what about you, Livia? I think um, the tuition fee and the living costs is, it, themselves are like really low compared to other countries that, um, yeah, are English-speaking 
so I was actually making comparisons in the beginning uh, mm -hmm. when I wanted to come here and I was looking at UK and it's completely a different story. Um, also really nice is the fact that Fontis helps you to get accommodation in the first year, uh, which for me, I was scared because I was in a new country and yeah, I, I didn't know what to do. So no. Fontis really helps you with that and it's really yeah, which is Which is a, of course a very important aspect. Yeah. So uh, application is one, finding student accommodation is two. Yes. yes. By the way, indeed, for tuition fees and so on, we, we give you more information later in the webinar. So, okay. Yeah. Do you have more things to mention so far? or I really like the, the Dutch culture and society itself, and I think it's really open to yeah, other cultures, and you really get to know people here really easily. So, yeah, I have a lot of international friends now, not only yeah, from Romania. Okay. So, that's really good to know, I'd say. And Elga, do you yes. have things to add? Yes, I can add that in general the Dutch are very open minded and straightforward, which can be sometimes difficult. But on the other hand, it's very nice because it leads to exchange of ideas. You don't have to be afraid to, to talk and speak up. Um, the Dutch, uh, the country is a great place to live. It's a lot of flat, you can cycle a lot. Uh, but also it's one of the safest countries in the world and ex according to the Global Peace Index it belongs to the top 10, top 1, no, sorry, the top 10 of happiest countries in the world. Furthermore, it's very easy uh, to get to the airport in Eindhoven. In this city we have an airport which uh, makes it easy to fly to Paris, London or whatever place within Europe in short uh, time. Also, um, well, we are, we are in the Brainboard region and uh, that's very high-tech area and Leo can mm. add about that. Yeah, so indeed we, we forgot to mention, to talk about our, uh, let's say, unique environment we're living in here, Brainboard region, Silicon Valley of Europe. Yeah. Do you have something to add to that? Um, it's very easy as an ICT student, in my case, to find a job within this field, especially because Pontis um, asks you to do an internship uh, during the third and the fourth year. Yeah, indeed, um, two internships, yeah, two, two internships. semesters. You and work and study in a company, yes. Yes, and it's an advantage that it's located in this area because there are a lot of companies here uh, working for, looking for students and working close to university, to this university, oh. to recruit them. Oh. You know, here at Fontes ICT and Engineering, we have around 120 partners in education. And so, indeed, they can help students a lot with finding internships. But also the assignments you're doing, your classes are also coming from these companies. Yep. So, yes. I think that's a great asset for you as an international student also to be here, uh, because Brainboard, is not only offering you a good study program, so here at Fontes, but hopefully also a career. Do, do you have plans to start up your career after graduation here in the region or in the Netherlands? Uh, yes, I did my internship in the third year already, but now I'm looking for a different company that I worked before so I can get a different experience and a different atmosphere. And hopefully I can uh, find a nice company to work also after graduation in the same same place. Okay, great. But for you, Olivia, you also have these kind of plans? Yeah, well, actually, I'm planning to move here forever, I would say. Oh. <laughs> because I really like this country and uh, I find myself in this lifestyle, as I said before. Uh, I'm also planning to do a master's after Fontis is, uh, is done. And actually, I wanted to mention before that when I was searching about Eindhoven, I found that it's called the City of Technology. And as we all know, Felix so, was born here. So, exactly. Uh, yeah. Uh, Okay. I think we're really lucky to be well, here. So later on, uh, we will also show you a video about other students living in Eindhoven and give you a little bit more of the atmosphere of this city. So we already mentioned that Fontes is a, a large university of applied sciences. Um, we offer quite a lot of English taught bachelor programs in various disciplines. Uh, ICT, art, uh, business, logistics, management, engineering, um, 
maybe Elga, you can mention the engineering programs we have on offer. Yes, we offer uh, engineering growth programs in automotive engineering, electrical mm -hmm. and electronic engineering, industrial engineering and management, which is like a business engineering program. Uh, no, I would say it's... Mechanical engineering and mechatronics. Okay, so coming back to the industrial engineering and management program, I would say it's a mix. It's around 60% of business related subjects and 40% related engineering programs, you know, which, which makes it quite unique, I would say, you know, especially for an interested business student. Okay, okay. Uh, I already mentioned ICT programs. What ICT programs do we offer here at Fontes Eindhoven, Mara? Uh, there are five tracks, so students can choose uh, one of uh, these five programs, which are ICT and software engineering, technology, business, infrastructure, or media design. But in the beginning, in the first semester, they have the chance to have uh, one subject uh, related to each of these five tracks and then they can easily choose their interest further on. So they will be able to explore all the options in the beginning and then they make their own choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed. So in the first semester, it's an orientation phase yes. on all the tracks. And then from the second semester, they choose a profile mm -hmm. that suits That's them exactly. best. You know? yeah. Okay, but except for these uh, tracks or profiles, as we call it, we also have specializations in ICT. Can you tell a little bit more about that, Livia? Uh, yeah, there are several specializations. So students who are really interested in uh, deepening their knowledge on a specific topic, uh, they can actually, yeah, um, go do their internships. Both their internships, they can do the minor and also to specializations. So they really have the chance to actually um, see and uh, graduate with that. Uh, yeah, specialization. It's really nice because then on your final diploma you, you also have mentioned the specialization. So in my case, for instance, I'm doing applied data science and I wasn't sure if I'm going to like it for the first semester. I went further with it on the second specialization semester and then I was really into it. So I just, I'm going to go until the end. Okay, so you, what specialization have you been doing? The applied data science. Data science. Yeah. But we have more artificial intelligence. Yeah, uh, game Design, game design, cyber security, cyber security. Yeah. Um, smart mobile, smart mobile. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah, indeed, that makes it very unique here at uh, Fontes uh, Campus Eindhoven yeah. because of the so many tracks and specializations. For every ICT, ICT student, there is a choice, or whatever suits you best, you can, you can go on with. Okay, do we have more? Yeah, we've already mentioned. The, the great network we have here for, uh, for all ICT and engineering programs in the Brainport region with, with companies. Do you also have an experience with that? You, you're working or you're working, you're chairman of Proxy. Yeah. You also have regular contact with these, com with, with these companies or? Yeah, we're trying to actually set up right now um, every month to have a, a person from a company and give a speech so that um, yeah, students can get an idea of what's happening in the outside world. Also, we have uh, sometimes here at Fontys, we have two times a year, if I'm not mistaken, uh, companies come and they recruit people for the graduation or oh. internship projects. And oh. I think that's a great opportunity. Um, we, we call it career days. Yeah. Yes, uh, indeed. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And then, as proxy, you also organize the. Uh, the huge leap week eh, with all these companies. Yeah, uh, Proxy is just part of the huge leap week. Actually, it's organized by another team. Uh, but yeah, huge leap week is a really nice opportunity to um, yeah see uh, companies talking about several topics, um, really hot topics, I would say, in the IT area, and not only even about business. So. Yeah. That's okay. Really nice. Great. So indeed, the companies here in Brainport, Silicon Valley, play an important role in the curriculum, you know, not only for, let's say, all the internship assignments students need, but also for many more aspects related to the study program. The world's changing so fast, you see Moore's Law and the doubling of the possibilities every year. This means we need other ways to educate. If you simply say, 
uh, you're starting in this education now and in four years you know this. It doesn't fit anymore because you don't know how the world will look in four years. That's a whole other ball game. My girlfriend studies at a university and they're learning everything out of a book. Everybody has the same assignment and uh, they don't have a say in what they are going to do. They just have one theory and everybody needs to test that. Uh, so the freedom is very limited. What I see here is that we always do something that's real. We always use everything we learn and I think that's a way better way to learn things. A lot of teachers try to push you to the limit. I think that helps a lot. What we try to do is uh, have real life projects which normally has also a product owner which is from outside world, from a company or another organization, uh, to make it meaningful and also uh, give more importance for students. Okay, I'm working on a real thing and not just because my teacher says I have to do it. And I think if you know it for the, for the real deal, uh, you, you'll be more motivated to do that or to, to learn or to research things or to do stuff for that. So what we do is uh, let students uh, define their own goals and their own competence profile and find stuff which fits into that and that's uh, making them adaptive and resilient to the environment. So they have to hunt for their own stuff. Uh, so a student is owner of its own content, its own pace, its own level, its own style and its own data. To deploy these kind of didactics, uh, the physical environment has to be different. Um, uh, classrooms are on their way out. I think now the building is more like the way uh, the school is. Now it's really open, a lot of glass, uh, it's open, physical, and you can approach teachers, like it's open in both ways. Giving them space and freedom to perform at their best, that's trusting in them that they will succeed. And with Delta, well, sometimes you have to kick them out of the building because they are very eager to do more and go the extra mile. I really love working with students, you can tell. Um, and giving these people such a head start in the world um, really does it for me. These are students that are gonna change things. And if we can get our educational system in such a way that every student or every learner gets to the place where he or she belongs, it will be a massive plus for society. As a potential student who wants to study in the Netherlands, you need to know the difference between universities of applied science and research universities. Keep in mind, at both types of universities, you can do your bachelor programs. But uh, the way you do it is totally different. At a UES university, a bachelor program is normally four years. At a research university, it's three years. And the main difference is because of the two internships you're doing in a UES program. Now, as we already mentioned, Mara mentioned it, uh, you have to do two internships, so that's two semesters, so that's one year. So that basically explains why a bachelor program at a UES university is four years and a research university three years. But there are more differences. At a research university, it's mainly about academic research, whereas at a UES university it's about applied research. So in our programs it's always a mix of theory and practical assignments, including the internships, and that's what you're missing at a research university. Also the entry requirements are different, so that's what you have to find out. Okay, we are having here now two students who are doing an ICT program at a UES university. So maybe, Mara, why did you choose to start an ICT program at Fontys UES? Um, I was really, when I was in high school, I was really looking for a university abroad that can give me the hands-on experience because uh, I'm a person that learns better by doing than by theory. 
and I talked to many students that were at that time uh, part of Fondis, mm -hmm. and they were very satisfied with the with the approach, the study approach, the project-based uh, approach that Fontis has, uh, which means that you have theory lessons, but then you get the chance to apply the theory in projects. So it's not only that you learn from books and then like, um, yeah, theory, it's uh, the theory itself, but then you get to apply that uh, by working in teams and doing different assignments that, uh, allow you to acquire the necessary knowledge. So that was a plus okay. in, my, in my case. I chose to go for applied sciences over the research university oh. because of that. Okay, yeah. that's great. And for you, Olivia? Yeah, I think it's really good to know the difference between a research and applied science uh, universities. Um, in my home country, so in Romania, there are not so many applied sciences uh, universities, so that was the moment I first thought about going abroad, and when I asked around, they suggested Fontes because it's one of the best applied sciences universities. Uh, it's really well known for that. Um, so I think it's really good, as Mara mentioned, that uh, you don't only get the theory, uh, and even if sometimes in the first year you still have some theoretical courses, but even though you don't get the idea of why those courses are taught, later on in the project you're going to link mm -hmm. the, the knowledge that you get there. So that's really, really nice. And uh, for a research university, uh, most of the students choose to do a master's. Um, and sometimes, for some of the universities, they need a pre-master program, which is half a year. Um, but that's yeah, that's but you, you can do it here as well, to still yeah. the pre-master. Yes. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. Well, no. So I think it's really good to know exactly your orientation, like you need to know if you really want the research because I could have done a research university back in, in my home country, but I really wanted to do something practical and work with teams. Also, uh, the teamwork is something that you really get an experience here because, yeah, I ask people around from the research universities and they're not really, yeah, used to work in teams, but we are already, yeah, we have the internships, we have a lot of projects and we already have this uh, this kind of experience well. That there are of course students who come in and then see, oh, at a research university it's only three years and yes. here I have to study four years. How can you make up later? Because as what you, what you mentioned, um, while you're studying here, you can already start your pre-master here at Fontes. By the way, our neighbor, 100 meters from here is the University of Technology. Eindhoven, which is a research university, yeah. so there you can do your pre-master while you're studying here. Yeah. But of course, that's an extra workload. Eh? Yeah, exactly. But do you know students who are doing this? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. And it's yeah. really nice that you can actually start it during your study, so you don't have to lose, let's say, half a, half a year yeah, later. Exactly. Yeah. And also, uh, for the interested students, maybe they're going to find out later, there is a Delta program. Uh, and it's really nice because there you get to work with companies, so they also propose uh, projects uh, with real clients and stakeholders and so on, but you can also uh, define your own projects. Oh. And an extra is you will get paid for it. Eh? Yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. but, but that's the same with the internships you mentioned. So, uh, so you study and work in a company for two semesters, so that's almost one year, but you get a small salary for it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It can differ. It depends on the companies, but yeah, it depends on the company. Um, but the idea is that you go there as a full-time employee because you work forty hours per week, um, and you have a project assigned, so you can actually apply all the knowledge and all the experience that you've gained until that moment in university. You you apply it um, on the market, and it's really nice to have that experience. And I think it really helps you to later on define what you really want to do and what really fits you. Because uh, if you study at, applied, at the University of Applied Science, like Fontis, um, you can get involved in many activities that can help you grow on many other personal, um, yeah, person you can improve your personal skills uh, aside from the knowledge. So you are more open and there are many opportunities that um, uh, you can choose from later on after graduation. Okay, uh, are you planning to do a master after 
You have taken the bachelor degree? Uh, I'm planning to do a master, but I'm, uh, I'm not sure when exactly because I thought about working for a few years in the field to um, experience many different jobs within the ICT domain, IT domain, because it's very uh, vast. And after that, once I know what I really want to do and what I'm good at, then I will choose a master program to deepen my knowledge in that domain. So it will be a bit later for me, okay. but of course uh, I could have chosen to do the pre-master during my fourth years, as Livia mentioned, and then start immediately the master. And then if you study at Fontis and you do the pre-master and then the master, um, you are at the same level with the student that does the research university and then the master immediately. But the advantage is that you have the hands-on experience uh, exactly. through internships and projects that you had during the studies here. Okay, great, thank you. Olivia, are you planning to do a master? Yes, as I mentioned before. Yeah. Um, here at TUI? Or? At the TUI yeah. University, yeah, because I um, already found a program that is really interesting and we had a course at one is really elective semester okay. so I I really want want to go on that direction. But also I wanted to mention the, the fact that the projects and having these internships uh, during the Fontis journey um, it's really nice on the CV so which most of the students from research universities don't have. Okay, thank you. Helga, you have something to add? So uh, have a look at the website if you want to read more about this. And make sure you know what kind of choice you make and what kind of learning suits you best. I do believe Eindhoven is charming. It has its appeal. I think it's a city for foreigners, that's for sure. And it's a city for innovation. That's my first impression. It's a very innovative place. Um, it's very focused on technology and it feels like home for me now. I live by the stadium and I always hear people chanting and everybody is so dedicated to the city. They're really proud of their own Brabant. Multicultural, women plein de viazza and hazelle. Let's talk about Eindhoven, your future study, study destination maybe. What can we tell you about Eindhoven? Now we already mentioned it's called, it's in the middle of Brainport region, Silicon Valley of Europe. Um, why? Philips was founded here. There are huge companies like ASML, VDL and many, many more. So it's really a concentration of uh, technology companies which involves a lot of innovations and patents. So that's one thing. But um, you, as a student, you need to live here. And we already mentioned, we will come to that back later. Uh, we will also take care of your student accommodation. But why living in Eindhoven? Now, let's ask our students. Mara. Um, I would say about Eindhoven that people are very helpful here. Because, for example, when I came here for the first time, in my first year, I had to go to make, uh, to register the town hall to open a Dutch bank account and to solve my issues with accommodation, but they are always willing to help you. And even if you go or if you call at the wrong department, they are always uh, trying to find a solution for you. And they, they are, uh, yeah, they just try to do their best to solve, to help you solve your, solving your issue. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's very important when you come from abroad and you are not used to live on your own. Uh, it's really nice that you uh, you are in contact with people that respect you and that uh, want the best for you. Okay, that's, great. And everybody speaks English? Yes, yes. Okay. That's a plus. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. Livia, what were your experiences when you came here to Eindhoven? Or I'm, your experiences so far? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a person who loves doing sports. So mm -hmm. I was doing that back in Romania as well. And so you're a P3 fan? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, at the first... By the way, do you know PSV, the best football club in the Netherlands? Okay, Livia, now you can continue. Yeah, so in the introduction we actually were presenting the Sports Centre, which is part of the TUE. Uh, but it's really nice that also Fonti students can get, go there, um, get a subscription, which is really cheap, by the way. 
92 euros for one, one year. year. Yeah. yeah. So really recommend that, and you can go to a lot of group classes, fitness on your own, um, reserve a, one of the fields, and yeah, go with your friends and play something. So it's it's super nice, and actually I'm uh, teaching spinning currently. Okay. Yeah, I really yeah. love it. I yeah. told you I love spinning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. All right, thank you. And uh, Elga, you have been living here all your life, I presume. Yes, I've been living in Eindhoven since uh, ages, and uh, I can only add that Eindhoven is a very uh, nice city. It's not too large, and it's also not a small village. It's somewhere in between, and there's a lot of green spots in the center of the city, so we have a lot of parks. Uh, also, we have a lot of events all year round. And what uh, is very interesting as well is that we have a lot of expats living in the city of Eindhoven. So it's very intercultural and always something to do in this city, which is very attract attractive. Okay, great. I think Eindhoven is the fifth largest city in the Netherlands, so indeed not too big, but definitely not too small. Okay, right. thank you. Okay, please watch a video now about uh, Eindhoven. Back in the 60s, a top secret research facility was located right here. Philips Natlab, the birthplace of many world famous inventions. Philips made Eindhoven flourish and created a breeding ground for future technology giants in doing so. The new millennium brought a new wave of inspiration to researchers and engineers in the Brainfort region. What started as a top secret R&D facility transformed into the perfect environment for open innovation. NatLab became High Tech Campus Eindhoven. Today, High Tech Campus Eindhoven hosts over 12,000 smart professionals and more than 200 companies closely working together on tomorrow's hardware technology. People from all over the world connect here in an environment where innovation comes naturally. What our future holds is even more exciting. Software and artificial intelligence became paramount in driving hardware innovation. High Tech Campus Eindhoven is determined to become one of the world's leading tech hubs where talent from all over the world comes together to work on major global challenges. An artificial intelligence lab, 5G hub, and high-tech academy are just a few steps on the way to the top. A strong focus on vitality and sustainability will attract even more key players and international talent. High-tech campus Eindhoven strongly believes in driving innovation for the greater good for a better world. To make that happen, we will mobilize our international network, our knowledge, and our facilities. Not just by connecting the right partners, but by actively initiating and taking part in groundbreaking movements. We invite you to join us on this adventure. Let's talk about admission requirements. How to get into one of our bachelor programs. Maybe, Livia, you can say a few things about that to explain to our potential students what do they need to do. Well, the most uh, important thing that you need to know is to have a secondary education diploma. Uh, the grades are more or less important. I think that you uh, need to have at least passing grade, of course, uh, but here at Fontys we teach you from the basics, so uh, in case you have lower grades for, let's say, programming courses, if you had that in the, in the secondary school, then it's not really an issue. No. Yeah, so, if I may interrupt you, of course, depending on what program you choose, for example, for the engineering programs, it's of course understandable that you need to have passing grades for mathematics and physics, yeah. Yeah. but for example, for the ICT programs, uh, mathematics is even not uh, compulsory anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
Then, of course, you need to have a good level of English. Uh, so you need to have at least an, I an IELTS uh, certificate with six as a grade or the TOEFL. Um, or other uh, options are also possible there. Cambridge, for example. Yeah. Yeah, and it's really important that you check out per country the requirements. It's a website which is actually stated now, it's www.newfic.nl and there you have more information per, per country, so definitely check that out. Oh. We, and, will, we will put it in the chat, of course. Yeah. And also, it's really good to know that we have, uh, at least for the ICT and for the engineering, we have two intakes, so not only September, but also for February. So if you are delayed with your courses from secondary education, you can always start in February as well. No. No, maybe uh, Elga can tell us more about that? Yes, uh, all ICT and engineering programs can be started in September or February, except for two programs. Uh, those are automotive engineering and mechatronics. They can only be started in September. Okay, yeah, maybe also to add, uh, as what Livia already mentioned, so a regular secondary school certificate uh, is sufficient to get in. Uh, and then students sometimes ask, yeah, but uh, do we need to make uh, an extra test or whatever? No, that's not required in Dutch education system. When you fulfill the requirements, as mentioned, then you can be accepted as a student. So far, we have spoken about how to get in our university. But as what I mentioned before, that's one thing. Finding student accommodation is a very important aspect of your application process. And of course, Fontis will help you with this. Um, we will find you a place to live, as we say. So maybe Mara, you can say a few more things about that. So when you started your program here, how did it work? Yes, and in the beginning, when I signed up to study for Fontis, after I got accepted, I was asked if I'm willing to uh, have accommodation through Fontis. And I accepted because as a student uh, from abroad, it's very hard to find accommodation here if you are in your own home country mm -hmm. before you start. And after the, the first year, you, have to, you are on your own. You have to find accommodation uh, by yourself, but you can contact agencies and uh, there are also Facebook groups that help students with that because there are people that have uh, that own a student house but it's not registered through an agency and then um, there you can see posts about available rooms and it's mostly uh, the accommodation that is available for students is mostly in student houses with mm -hmm. at least three four students and it starts um, per month from 350 euros, I would say, but it depends a lot on uh, the requirements that you have for mm -hmm. the room. Oh. So even if it's a normal room or a studio, or it depends on your, uh, yeah, on your liking. And it's all close to the university. Yes, I think um, you can cycle maximum four or five kilometers from Fontis, but that's also already pretty far. Mm -hmm. But um, oh. yes, they are around around the universities. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, thank you so far. Livia, do you have something to add to what Mara told us? What can you tell us more about student uh, accommodations? You also got one from Fontes in your first year. Yeah, and I remember that the signing up for the accommodations through Fontes was just opening and it was like the moment I entered the site was almost like stuck because everyone was trying to get the accommodation so it's really a huge fight on the accommodation <laughs> side I would say but uh, don't worry about it because in the end new accommodations appear on our website so Fontis is gonna is gonna help you and even if you're in the second year and you are on your own as Mara said um, and you try to find your own accommodation you are still gonna be helped by Fontis if something happens you can always contact Fontis the administration even if they're gonna for the website and so on. So you shouldn't be worried about that. Uh, what is there for you? Yeah. yeah, but indeed what is important, as what I mentioned before, it's part of your application process. Yeah. So as a student, as a potential student, you should not forget about it. You know, yeah. Because otherwise you can be accepted, but then if you don't have a place to live, then you, you might have a problem, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Exactly. So pay attention to that. Exactly. And Elia, do you have some, something to add? Yes, if you want to know more about this specific topic, about finding your accommodation in time, don't forget when you got accepted to start searching for accommodation. And if you want to read more about this topic, please have a look at our website at www.fontis.edu slash practical information and you will find everything you need to know about this. Here an overview of the ICT study programs or profiles as we have as we offer them here at Fontis in Eindhoven. Um, let's ask the students again to tell you briefly where these study programs are about. Mark, can you say something, a few things about business and software engineering? Sure. Um, for ICT and business, I would say that's more for the people that are in the future will work uh, in a company and they are between the customer and the programmers. Mm -hmm. They are the people that need to translate the requirements from the customer to the programmers. So it's, um, it has some sides of the programming as well, but it's also more business related. Uh, whereas uh, software engineering is mostly coding, so mm -hmm. you learn how to develop software applications. And um, yeah, it's a little bit more flexible, let's say, um, and you also have projects that are focused on the development of a website or um, a mobile application or, yeah, it's, it's coding mostly. Okay, yes. and that's what you're doing? Yes, okay. that's what I'm studying. All right, thank you. And uh, Livio, can you say something more about uh, infrastructure, media design and technology? Uh, I'm going to start with the technology. It's mostly about working with hardware. Um, it's about having a lot of components, connecting them together. Um, in the first semester, I know that we also had a project on that and we had to build up a robot, a small Lego robot from scratch. Um, and that's really, really nice. Um, for the infrastructure, it's mostly about connecting all the ICT sites. It's about mostly focusing on security and networking uh, and yeah media design it's about creating content it's about learning how to create nice websites uh, social media as well if i'm not mistaken um, and that's mostly about it in a nutshell okay thank you so um, more information about all these study programs you can get next week from the 16th of november so have a close look at uh, our website so there you can find webinars related to all these programs and you are invited to take part in them. Elga, do you have something to mention about yes, the profiles um, as well? Yeah, we wanted to add um, and show you this video about the open day of uh, last year when we were not limited by Corona so at an open day you can always ask all of, all of your questions and now you can ask all your questions next week in the webinars that are to be found on our website. Yeah, and of course, everybody can ask his or her questions now also in the chat, of course. We are in the Netherlands. Eindhoven, Fontes University of Applied Sciences. And right now the open day uh, takes place and many people are here to see our university. Ja, tot nu toe lijkt me best wel leuk. Ik vind het een hele gezellige school. Uh, er zijn heel verschillende soorten mensen aanwezig, dus dat is wel leuk. Je hebt natuurlijk ook heel verschillende richtingen, dus dat uh, is dan ook wel een beetje logisch. Ja, het is uh, nogal interessant. Er zijn uh, heel wat mensen die uh, hun verhaal kunnen doen en met vragen kan ik uh, altijd bij hun terecht. Dus de eerste indruk was wel uh, goed. Fontis is great is that you see your end product. So you're not just studying a theory, you can apply your knowledge. And also the international atmosphere is something that attracts most of the students. They are coming from uh, different countries. They have the opportunity to get to know different people with different opinion and uh, different backgrounds. 
And it's uh, actually uh, super interesting the fact that you can have a really good relationship with teachers so they can help you anytime you need. Nou, in eerste instantie vind ik dat ons onderwijs is gebaseerd op het feit dat wij proberen een veilige leeromgeving te creëren voor studenten. Zij mogen leren wat ze willen en wat ze misschien al kunnen. Of misschien heeft de student wel uh, zoveel ambitie dat hij in een open leeromgeving zijn eigen leertraject kan uitzetten. Het is uh, ja, hard werken hier, maar ontzettend leuk om uh, ja, gave dingen te maken. Here you see an overview of all bachelor programs. So as what we mentioned before, they are all four years. And uh, is, of course it starts with year one, which we call the exploration year. Maybe Mrs. Elga, you can add a few things more to that. Yes, in the first year you will explore together with your other students what you like most, what you're good at, and what suits you best, so you can get into the deep in your second year. Yeah, okay, but uh, also important to mention, uh, in each study program you can achieve study credits. Mm -hmm. And the maximum amount each year is 60 credits. But indeed, the first year exploration, exploration year, finding out what's your cup of tea. Okay, year two then the focus on your major. Could you say a few things more about that, please? So you already chose basically what your cup of tea is, uh, so now you know exactly what you want to focus on. Uh, you're going to have also projects more focused on yeah, your preference and also courses. So it's a really nice combination between theoretical but also practical, really practical assignments, again, based on your focus choice. Okay, and then Again, yeah, you can gain 60 credits at the end of year two, and then you move on to year three. And then, Mara, what's going to happen then? <laughs> In year three, you have the chance to have the first, your first internship, as I mentioned before. And aside of that, you can also have a minor. And as Livia mentioned before, that can be either specialization-based, uh, pre-master, or you can have the chance to go abroad to, univer to an university or do um, study in the Netherlands, but a different program that you what already have. So, for example, if you want to go abroad, you can go anywhere in the world. Um, if you check the website, uh, the Fontis website, there you can find uh, universities that have a partnership with Fontis and um, they allow students to go there and study six months, anything they, anything uh, that the students choose to. Um, and after six months, of course, they continue with year four. Or if you don't want to go abroad as a student, but you would still want to do something else than what you've studied before, then you can still be uh, in the Netherlands at another university or even at Fontis and do something like, for example, um, acting or if you study ICT you can choose to study psychology that uh, semester so it's all about uh, what you want to grow in and then it's uh, year four in which you yeah you get to specialize I think Livia can no. mention, uh, mention no. more about it okay so thank you so indeed at Fontis you study a major and a minor program mm -hmm. okay yes. great Livia year four well, you have already been through a long uh, journey for the first three years, so now you are preparing to become a professional, I would say. So it's your uh, final specialization semester, um, again, on your focus, um, and then graduation assignment. Uh, I know that there are also some cases where you can go abroad and do a graduation yes. pro uh, project, and also um, there are some students who are really ready to become entrepreneurs and they actually open up their startups and they're doing their graduation within their startup company which is really nice because I, I also love ICT and software engineering a lot so I really want to go into programming but at the same time I'm focusing a bit on the business side so I would like to combine both so I think that's a great opportunity. That's how Facebook started, eh? Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, exactly, okay, yeah. great. All right, I think that's in a nutshell uh, for every bachelor program, uh, the schedule. And what I mentioned, after each year, you can gain 60 credits. So that means when you have obtained 240 credits, you will have your bachelor degree. 
Teachers are capable of taking the best out of you and not discourage you if you happen to need a little bit more time learning something that you don't already know. For me, the teachers are a source of motivation and inspiration. This gives me the power to work towards even the impossible. My name is Sonia, student at Fontis ICT. I am Melis, also a student at Fontis ICT. I am Eugen ICT. Teachers at Fontes give us good starting points about new technologies which we can later start quickly building upon. Something I personally learned at Fontes is to be open to new ideas and innovations. Teachers let us think big and not be restrained by what we already know or the technology which already exists. If you want to develop an idea, then you can always ask your teacher for guidance. Teachers at Fontes are really passionate about what they are doing and it's inspiring. We can always present our ideas in front of the teachers and they are so open-minded that they let our imagination go wild. This helps us be unique and improve but also maybe come up with something which doesn't even exist yet. Apart from the study programs, of course, we also have student associations belonging to each bachelor program. <coughs> Livia, you are the president of ICT's Proxy. Can you tell us something about it? Yeah, uh, Proxy is a study association which is made uh, by students for students. And uh, basically our goal is to help the students uh, from the ICT. Uh, we are organizing a lot of uh, yeah, events and workshops. Uh, Mara is also here with me and she's a volunteer. She's a whole, um, member within Proxy, so she can say a few words about mm -hmm. it. That's true, yeah, thank you. Um, I think being part of Proxy is really nice because I get the chance to help our fellow students. For example, we have workshops, especially when uh, exams or deadlines are approaching. We uh, try to um, help the students with their um, difficulties in different subjects, but we also have different uh, social activities such as uh, parties and uh, different small quizzes or contests just to bring all the students together. And I think it's really nice, especially for students from abroad, to just find here a nice community also formed from students. Yeah, and Proxy is a fast-growing community and the first contact you're going to have with uh, Proxy is actually when you're going to come here to Fontis. Uh, we are organizing the introduction week, so we are helping you to get to know your fellow students with your class. Um, so yeah, everyone can be part of Proxy in the end. And now uh, here's a short video made by Proxy. Welcome to Fontes. We know that recently the new conditions of the virus might be affecting you. We want to let you know that both Fontes and Proxy are there for you if you need help. Ask us. We care about our fellow students. And don't forget to follow us to be up to date with our up upcoming activities and be safe and, most important, don't forget to keep your distance. Of course, all engineering programs also have a student association. The one of engineering is called Innovum and the one of industrial engineering and management is called Lean. They will also take part in the introduction and organize it. At Fontes Campus Eindhoven, we offer the following five engineering programs. Automotive engineering, industrial engineering and management, electrical and electronic engineering, mechanical engineering and mechatronics. All of our English taught engineering bachelor programs lead to a Bachelor of Science. The Automotive Engineering program will teach you how to design, 
create and test future vehicles. Think of the development of innovative electric vehicles and the communication and navigation systems that operate with the vehicle and its environment. So now a little bit about the electrical and electronic engineering. Well, in this program you'll mostly learn about designing and developing the uh, electronic components within uh, consumer goods. Um, and on top of that, you're going to be focusing on the systems used by machines, uh, equipment in the industrial um, applications, and yeah, here you can think about mobile communication, uh, aerospace products. Uh, and uh, there are four main programs, uh, and these would be the uh, sound engineering, the care and cure, the uh, smart and sustainable, and connected world. When it comes to industrial engineering and management, students here have the chance to study a broad variety of uh, subjects from uh, technology to economics, management, logistics, and human resources. And the goal is that in the end they are ready for a man management position in a technology company. And this company can be um, either one that develops high-tech products, um, one that is a manufacturing or logistic company. So basically this project, this program is more for students that are focused on both uh, business and technology. Well, the mechanical engineering, uh, here you really focus on the design and construction of machines um, and devices. And here you can think about the amusement park, so it's literally everywhere, I would say. Uh, yeah, you're going to be designing uh, oil rigs and plastics industry, so everyone is welcome in this one. Uh, regarding megatronics, is actually a combination between electrical, electrical and electronic uh, engineering, mechanical engineering, control systems and software. And it's also just a process from designing, uh, designing to making a robot, so it has a focus on robotics and control uh, technology. More detailed information about all these engineering programs will be provided in several webinars planned next week. Our teachers and current students who will give the webinars will be glad to meet you. If you want to join one or more of the webinars, please visit our website fontes.edu slash opendays. Find the bachelor program of your choice and register for one or more of the webinars. After registration, you will receive a confirmation by email and the link giving access to the webinar. Just click on the link and you can join us. During the webinar, you will have the chance to ask all of your questions in the chat and we will reply to them right away. Now here is a video about the Nexus building at Campus Eindhoven, where all engineering programs are located. We offer different options that may help you in making up your mind, like online open days, webinars, offer study programs, a virtual campus tour, and online workshops. General information about Fontes is to be found on fontes.edu slash meetus. You can find the full agenda of the planned webinars on fontes.edu slash open days. 
Also, if you are interested to know more about uh, some personal experiences of a few students that are coming from abroad and studying in the Netherlands at Fontis, you can just access the uh, link that you see on, the, on this slide and you will get to know more of their um, personal stories. We are Fontis. Do you want to join us? Still having questions? Please let us know now in this webinar or send your questions by email to campuseindhoven at fontes.nl. Now we will remain in the chat of this webinar to give replies to your questions. Please don't hesitate to send in your questions. Thank you for your interest and for joining us today. We wish you a lot of good luck in uh, finding your preferred bachelor program. For now, we wish you all the best.